Okay, so let's jump into Earthship Principle 4, building with natural and recycled materials. So natural and recycled materials, it's a pretty broad topic, but some examples here commonly used in Earthships are tyres, bottles, cans, rammed earth, adobe, cob, bamboo, wood, other materials we'll have a look at, urbanite, and so on. Uh, a quick overview of a couple of these are tyres, which is kind of an Earthship signature material. It's typically what people think of when, when you mention an Earthship, if they know anything about them. Um, bottle walls are another common feature. Um, quite pleasing to look at, let light through from, from room to room. Aluminium can walls are essentially lost formwork. Uh, gives you kind of a cement matrix with holes where the cans are, so you, you use less material. Less cement, less sand. Rammed earth, that's kind of one of my favourites. I'm a bit biased towards rammed earth, I guess. This is a picture of the AG Union, I think, AG Credit Lobby Wall um, in the US. It's It weighs about 40 tonnes, I think. I did a bunch of reading about that. Um, particularly pleasant in their, in their lobby in the US. Um, we've got Adobe as well. This is a picture of... An adobe wall at the four-person eco home I worked on in Taiwan. It was part of the 2018 International Taijung Flora Expo. And a cob wall here on the right. Um, cob, again, quite flexible. Uh, we've got other types of natural or recycled materials, such as bamboo, wood. Straw is another one with really low embodied energy. Urbanite is... Things like concrete bricks, masonry that have been demolished or removed from a, another building site that you can use again. Engineered timber beams, I really like the look of these glue lamb, timber and bamboo kind of beams. Uh, obviously done in a workshop or a factory, so they're, they're strips or layers of, of bamboo or timber that are glued together, really, really strong. And all kinds of insulation made from paper or other recycled materials. Expanded clay is another option. Um, okay, so some details on tyres here. The, the kind of Earthship signature material. Uh, common objections to this is that they don't look nice, but then, you know, looking at concrete blocks over here, neither do concrete blocks. They're not particularly pleasing aesthetically. Uh, and of course, you'd, ply, you'd apply finishes, render, plaster, whether you're using... Uh, natural or, or modern kind of building materials to, to finish your walls externally and internally. Um, another thing that seems to be a bone of contention with tyres is um, the off-gassing question that's come up. Do they off-gas when, when the walls are finished? Some people say yes, some people say no. I've done a bunch of reading on it. You, you might want to look into that yourself before thinking about using tyres, but they seem to last as far as we're con concerned for the human human time frame, human time scale, they seem to last forever pretty much when they're protected from ultraviolet light. So I'm not sure whether ultraviolet light is what can cause the off-gassing as it causes degradation um, in the rubber material, but they're really, really strong. And um, once you've rendered them and plastered them, they're certainly no less pleasing to the eye than, than concrete blocks because they're, they're hidden beneath the wall finish, right? So, Some positives about tyres are they're readily available, the cost if you're picking them up from a recycling yard or from mechanic shops, um, auto repair places, maybe they're giving them away free just so they don't have to pay for disposal themselves. Um, the mass is obviously a uh, a big bonus you can get a lot of stored heat in these walls if you were building the same wall out of concrete it would cost an arm and a leg um, very thick walls as well if you're looking for uh, say sand reduction or whatever it's gonna it's gonna sound very nice and quiet inside a wall inside a house that's got a wall two feet thick compared to I don't know six inches of concrete or whatever um, almost any dirt will do in a tyre, so when you're building a wall out of rammed earth, uh, maybe you have to be a bit more particular about screening the soil and the size of rocks that you let in there, but with a tyre, it's this really strong, steel-reinforced rubber 
it's almost a cylinder. Um, you can you can literally put pretty much any dirt that you like in there as long as the moisture content is 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 right. Then it's going to compact well. Um, it's some some amazing engineering. I mean, if you look into uh, something I shared the other day, uh, Goodyear, Goodyear, and <laughs> it was. Uh, uh, nuclear weapons manufacturers, or something, or, or some kind of some kind of really high tech um, company that kind of pioneered computer aided um, design or physical modelling, and um, they're really really well engineered. And if you think about the stresses that your car undergoes under heavy braking, going from 100 kilometres an hour to zero in seconds, then tyres are really 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 strong in terms of making a brick out of them with rammed earth in there. You're not going to damage these things very easily. Uh, you've got flexibility with the wall design as well. You can lay these circular earth blocks out in, in whatever kind of pattern you desire for your wall. Curved walls are not so much of a problem. Uh, durability again, once they're, once they're filled with earth and the wall is rendered and plastered on the inside, um, they're going to last a very very long time. I don't think we need to worry about it in our li during our lifetimes. Um, moving on to bottle walls, um, they go full width through the wall. So what you do with the bottle is you cut it off just below the shoulder uh, with two bottles the same size or the same diameter at least. Maybe the, the the height of the bottle is not so important, but same diameter. You tape them together with duct tape, masking tape, any kind of tape. I guess doesn't matter once they're cemented in the wall. And then that acts as uh, the one thing it does is it, it it means that you require less material to make the wall again. You require less sand, cement, and so on. Um, but it also admits the light through. You can see you get some really nice nice effects with with bottle walls. Um, also, you don't have to use a lot of energy to melt them down to make other glass products. So yeah, possible benefit depending on the situation. Uh, al aluminium camels, same kind of thing with the material in the wall. You're creating a, a sand cement matrix where the can forms a, a space within the wall that you don't need material for. Um, and then again, you know, it's just rendered. This is a scratch coat here on what looks like a domed roof, but you see the tyres there. They would also receive a scratch coat, and, and I think this bottle wall. I'm not sure if those bottles go all the way through or not, but it looks like here they're using cans in this space and then bottles in this space as some kind of light feature within the wall itself. So you can you can get quite creative using you know tires, cans, bottles in terms of the design of the wall itself. Rand earth is my personal favourite, although not necessarily the best for everything. Uh, I I just love the look of it. The, the strata that you, you get from the, the slight variations in earth that you put in. You can also use dye in this, uh, iron oxide I think is what what is commonly used to get the red effect if, you're, if your soil hasn't got any red clay in it or is not very red itself. Uh, there's probably, I'm not sure if they're using some kind of carbon like charcoal for the black stuff but I've messed around a little bit with dyes making test blocks. I put my friend Greg's in G-Works in Taiwan he let me use his workshop and I've played around a bit with this but this is just a really nice example of the wall so the walls that you make would be monolithic there's no board or rendering or plastering required when you finish them that's another thing I like about them they're as massive as the round earth in tires because it's it's compacted compressed earth you will need formwork obviously so you'll need to plan your walls a little bit more carefully possibly your window openings and door openings um, beautiful, beautiful wall, wall finishes. Um, in terms of being um, a little bit more difficult, there's a, you'd need some basic carpentry skills, but you can get get some good ideas of of how to make the formwork from building homes with earth by Minky. Go know Minky. You can have a look at his work. Um, it's not that difficult if you can use a saw, but probably the formwork you'll need two guys to move it around because you might be working with an eight foot by four foot sheet um, at a time with plenty of whalers on the side depending on the type of formwork that you use but it's I like this idea of a round earth wall 
in for using formwork more than the tires as well because this seems to this this method or technique seems to lend itself more to mechanically ramming um, I've rammed a few tires with my friend Steve over uh, over on the east coast at his Earthship Star mountain cabin in the summer it's humbling <laughs> it, it's quite tough work but you you know you don't have to push yourself that hard I guess if you don't want to I was only there for five days or a week so I wanted to kind of get a lot done with him but uh, when you're laying out the formwork if you've got a nine inch 18 inch two foot wide wall with your formwork it's much easier to get a small whacker plate in there in fact I think there's one in Gerno Minky's book that um, kind of has some kind of sensor or, or um, <laughs> something on it so that when it hits the end of the formwork the direction reverses and the whacker plate just goes back and forth within the wall and whacks it for you so you could theoretically have several forms set up or a length of forms set up instead of just working on one with with a backhoe and guys tamping it you could have a small whacker plate in there um, pneumatic tampers uh, seem to be quite easy to get hold of these days so they, they look like a giant pogo stick with you know compressed air going through it and they just do the whacking for you so we whacked um we tamped the earth down by hand at steve's place on the east coast and it's doable and if you've got a bunch of friends to help and throw in a keg of beer or something and they want to help out then then great it'll probably happen quite quickly um another material is adobe uh, essentially it's just sand and clay uh, you can add rice straw husks etc in there as a as a filler or to help with um, drying of the bricks and then crack so much straw would help with that doesn't actually add a lot of tensile strength from what I've read uh, common misconception they're easy to make they're very pleasant aesthetically they're easy to recycle back into dirt um, can be nearly as massive as a tire wall somewhere near but if you're compressing earth in a in a tire wall or in a in a rammed earth wall from 11 to 7, uh, maybe maybe two-thirds of the weight, but they're quite substantial. Um, as with other earth-based materials, adobe bricks, uh, rammed earth walls, cob, they regulate humidity really, really well. And Some people say that they're difficult to keep clean in, in, terms, of, in terms of dusting them off or cobwebs or something. I'm not sure if that differs if you if you apply linseed oil or, or some kind of coating to them to keep them smooth and whether that then itself inhibits the humidity regulation uh, that they seem to do so well. And then cob walls as well would be another another natural material. Soil soil and straw basically and some water obviously. They're massive so you get the thermal mass. Materials are readily available probably on your site. Re 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 blah blah blah. <laughs> relatively easy to build although you probably would have to you know pay decent money for for someone who was a an artist in their trade you know you could probably spend a lifetime learning cob as you can with any natural material easy to pick up and easy to do you can spend a lifetime mastering it uh, I think you have to you, you have to leave it maybe a day or two between building courses with cob to let it dry or it can sag under its own weight uh, you've got freeform kind of flexibility with the wall design so you can you can make any shape that you can imagine I guess with the wall and as with tire walls round earth adobe cob they're pretty much fireproof right you, you can light a fire outside and and you're not gonna burn through that wall if, if it's a foot thick two foot thick of, of earth and clay soil sand clay so if you live in a fire prone area um, rammed earth cob adobe could be an attractive solution uh, wrapping that up then if you're looking at building with natural and recycled materials yourself the earthship principles thermal mass is the principle and you know building with natural and recycled materials is the principle so the tires are just the thing that when they started building earthships are really readily available every single place they they looked where they were building earthships um, that may not be so where you live um, I haven't checked to see if I could get a house worth of tires here in Taiwan but um, 
there are plenty of other natural materials out there. Straw, straw bale, urbanite, engineered, t engineered timber beams, again, paper, wool, insulation, expanded clay, lots and lots and lots of options. And whatever is readily available in your area, you can quite easily do a quick Google search for embodied energy for X material versus Y material. You see straw down here is really, really low. Um, concrete seems to be quite low as well. You go up to the metals. Where's glass on here? Glass is you know, kind of up there, but the metals are really high in the amount of CO2 per kilogram of building material. Straw, stone, I'm guessing earth would be down here around straw and stone somewhere as well because a lot of the time you're just using what you've got on site or it's being trucked in from a short distance away, not very far away. So, yeah, that's it with building a natural... Um, building with natural and recycled materials. Uh, one more video to go in this series, so uh, drop it a like, subscribe if you want to see the next one, and uh, I'll have that out soon. Cheers.